Welcome in to National University Career Services, How to Make Your LinkedIn Profile Shine Workshop. We're going to be going through in this workshop several things that will optimize your LinkedIn profile, talk to you about how to utilize different aspects of it, as well as optimize how your online presence comes across through LinkedIn specifically. Now, several of the discussion topics that we're going to have today will cover these things. Why are we using LinkedIn? What is the purpose behind what we're doing? Your LinkedIn profile and what we're going to do to kind of optimize what that digital footprint looks like so that you can have the best possible opportunities of making connections on LinkedIn and being found online as well uh, from a career standpoint, from a professional development standpoint on LinkedIn. We'll talk a little bit about growing your network and also about posting content on LinkedIn to keep your profile engaged and to be able to continue to grow that network that we talked about just earlier. So let's start with talking about why you should be using LinkedIn. The real kind of point behind LinkedIn is that it's a, it's a digital place for your professional being to live. So you, you create a digital spot for your resume to be essentially, you create a digital place for your professional presence to be online. That way, if someone is searching for someone like you, or if you're in a job search process and someone is looking for um, your digital footprint, if they do a Google search for you in as part of an application or as part of a job search process, there is something for them to find online that presents your kind of professional life in a digital way that they can kind of cross compare to your application material, cross compare to your resume and learn possibly a little more about you. One of the benefits of LinkedIn is that because it's a digital space, it's not limited to a one to two page resume like a resume is when you're submitting that for job applications. So LinkedIn can be a little bit more. You can include additional information. You can utilize it for a lot of different ways. But as a digital footprint for you, that's the baseline kind of reason for a LinkedIn profile. Now, obviously, there's a lot more you can do with it. It also provides you with an opportunity to be found. People, especially recruiters in HR and talent acquisition teams are using LinkedIn to discover people that have the skills, abilities, and background that they are looking for, for opportunities within their companies. And so people will reach out to you via LinkedIn if you fit certain criteria that they're looking for. So the more and the, and the more accurate and the best information you can present on LinkedIn will give you the opportunity to have those connections be made. It gives you an authentic voice. It shares your personality, creativity, and interests. And again, when people are looking, when people see those things and they start to connect with you and you start to engage with your network on LinkedIn, that will be a way for you to share all of those things from your professional life that you might not otherwise have on a digital presence from a social media platform perspective online. And so you really want to have this be your professional social media platform of choice. You can utilize other social media platforms as well, but LinkedIn is going to be the one that creates that kind of natural professional presence for you that's going to pay off in the long run because of the networking and because of the reason why people are on LinkedIn. It's there for professional networking. It's there for job search processes, for finding talent um, and all of those things. So there's a lot of great ways to utilize LinkedIn. You can also utilize LinkedIn as a professional development tool. A lot of great best practices are shared on LinkedIn. You can join groups that will be sharing best practices within your industry or in your field. You can follow companies on LinkedIn, which will also provide you with the opportunity to have connections within those companies and to stay up to date on what those companies are doing. All of those reasons are kind of powerful reasons why you might want to put a LinkedIn profile together. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in a job seeking mode or in a networking mode to utilize LinkedIn and to make sure that your, your profile is up to date and that you're posting and active on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great way to make sure that you're utilizing your network, keeping your professional footprint up to date at all times, regardless of whether you're in that job seeking phase or not. One of the first things that we will suggest to you as you start to look at making changes or updates to your LinkedIn profile, and this is especially true if you have a an existing profile with a lot of connections already. If you have a brand new profile and you haven't made a lot of connections yet, this is not as important, but I would still suggest doing it. If you have 
uh, a profile with a lot of connections already, or even with just a few connections, and you start to make a lot of adjustments or changes to your LinkedIn profile, one of the things that LinkedIn does is just a built-in feature of LinkedIn is it notifies people you are connected with on LinkedIn of major changes that you make to your profile. When you're doing a large overhaul or edit of your LinkedIn profile, this can become kind of obnoxious, to be honest, if you're part of their uh, of your network, because it will ping you every time you make a change or an update to a piece of your LinkedIn profile. So to avoid that, use these instructions on this slide to turn off your key profile update sharing capabilities. Um, this will keep LinkedIn from sending out those pings to your network every time you make an edit. So this is a really important kind of first step before you start making a lot of changes to your profile. Go ahead and turn this on. Your network will thank you for it, especially the people that you've connected with already on LinkedIn. And it will allow you to make changes without the feeling of uh, constantly paying people or becoming annoying or something like that. So make sure you follow these instructions here to get that button switched to the off position, at least while you're making key changes in kind of a, a larger scale. Once you're only making sh like quick updates or different things like that, you might want this on if you're making like a critical job move or you're switching fields and you're posting something new, like a new position that you've gotten or something like that. Most of the time, honestly, I just suggest that you just turn this off and leave it off. If you need to make some sort of announcement about a change that you want people within your network on LinkedIn to know about, make a post about it. That will go over better than having LinkedIn be on pinging people when you make changes to your profile as well. So this is one piece that we probably would suggest just leave it off if you need to make a, an announcement or a change or so you want people to see stuff, the stuff in your network, just make a, a post on LinkedIn to be able to inform them of that change. Another big thing to get you started in the right direction and to give you that unique look that really feels tailored to you is to customize your URL within the platform. What you will notice is that your URL is some combination of your name with a large string of numbers and letters after it. It doesn't come across very well. It's not easy to tell people about. If you customize your URL, it gives that extra layer of, hey, I took the time to make a custom URL that's easier to remember, usually cons consists of your name or some variant of your name that allows it to be unique. But this is where you can have that extra added touch that makes your, your LinkedIn profile feel like your own and makes it easy for you to share with other people as well, because you don't have to copy paste a lot of numbers and letters at the end that aren't really something you would type necessarily. This way you can just go to www.linkedin.com slash IN slash whatever your profile choice name is. Again, typically it's gonna be your first and last name. You, maybe there's an, uh, you know, an underscore or a dash in there somewhere. Um, so there are ways that you can customize that to make sure that you have your own URL that's easy to remember and easy to share with people. Let's talk about your LinkedIn profile. There are several key sections of your LinkedIn profile that as you get into building your profile, you will see as you're looking through um, your whole profile and editing each section. The first thing that you'll come across that you can edit on your LinkedIn profile is your headline. Your headline becomes very important because what happens is when people are searching on LinkedIn, depending on what view they're using to look through different people, but when you're connecting with people, there are oftentimes there are three things that are the primary pieces of information that someone will see before they actually click into your LinkedIn profile. So if you're doing a search for someone, the stuff that will pop up are your profile picture, your name, and your headline. And so those three things are key pieces of your LinkedIn profile to help you be found and to be more searchable within the system. So your name obviously is just going to be your name. Sometimes people will put um, their their any letters or titles or things like that that go afterwards. If you have an advanced degree or if you have a special certification or something, you'll sometimes see that after the name. Uh, but the profile picture becomes something that to focus on, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then the headline is your little blurb that gives people a quick look at who you are that kind of want, you want it to kind of entice them. It's your hook to make them want to come in and look at the rest of your profile. 
Oftentimes you want this to connect with the audience that you want on your profile to some degree. And so it's tied in some way, shape or form to the industry or to the job title or to the job field that you're in. You'll see people do a lot of different things with this. One of my best suggestions for building a good headline for your LinkedIn profile, review other people's headlines on LinkedIn, particularly people who are in your field, who have a lot of connections and who are kind of well-known. Check out what their headlines say. How are they designing those? I like to keep mine um, generic, but also specific to things that I am passionate about. Um, so you'll notice if you jump into even uh, any of our National University Career Advisors, you can jump into their LinkedIn profiles. We all have our profiles out there that you can see. Check out the way that these headlines are written. Check out people in your field to pull from what you might want in these headlines. Again, typically something that is tied to your field or industry, maybe even a title that you've held, but don't stop at that. You know, make it more than that. What are you interested in? What are you passionate about within the field? What types of things are you growing towards uh, as well? Those are the types of things that will hook someone in and make them want to learn more about you. Check out some examples of people that you are fans of on LinkedIn to see what kind of options you might have to kind of craft a headline that both describes who you are, but also shares some of the stuff that you're passionate about because when people resonate with that, that's what's going to get them kind of click into your profile. Your headshot photo is kind of the other piece of those three pieces of information that are typically going to be the opening things that people see about your LinkedIn profile before they actually click into your profile. So it is important to have one of these. There's statistics out there that, that share that the, having a profile photo like increases your chances of being found and clicked on and looked at on LinkedIn by like really large amounts. So you want to have one of these. Avoid making it a selfie if at all possible. If you can get someone else to take the picture, it will typically turn out better. Um, you want it to be a recent photo. So it's something you kind of want to keep up to date every so often. Make sure that you take a new photo every little bit to keep that up to date. Make sure your lighting is correct and it's not too dark. Make sure you're dressed professionally or at least in a way that portrays um, your profession in a good way. Um, make sure that you're getting your background correct. Most of the time, this means having pretty much nothing in your background. You want it to really bring out your headshot and your face, want to be the focal point of this. There are a lot of different ways. Some people will be looking at the camera. Some people will be looking slightly off camera. I, my preference is just a straight on headshot, um, but you have a little bit of way, like personality that you can play to in that, right? Again, keep it professional. Make sure that your head is centered on there. Um, and that your your face is kind of the primary aspect of there. If you're uh, someone that that maybe doesn't naturally have a smile on your face, or if you need to be reminded to do that, most of the time you're going to want to have this have a, a nice smile on it to to bring out that personality um, and to and make it inviting and friendly to want to click on your profile. There's also the opportunity within LinkedIn to put a background photo or a banner photo um, on the top of your profile. Here are some websites that might have some opportunities for you to take a look at some of those things. Our suggestion typically is going to be tie that background photo to your profession in some way, shape or form. Um, whether it's you're a teacher and you're putting maybe a, there's a, a blackboard or, you know, something in the background that represents your profession. Um, if you're, you know, in different different spaces, different things might represent you um, well as, in addition to that. Some people will put, um, I, in fact, I have in mind a, a background of the city that I live in. So a skyline of kind of the buildings that people work at. Again, I feel like that keeps it professional, but also customizes it to yourself a little bit. So there are definitely ways to play with this banner image, this background photo for the top of your profile in a way that also shows off some of your personality and some of the things that you care about, but also ties back into that kind of level of professionalism, right? Um, so have something that is customized to you, maybe both, both something that you're uh, passionate about or that you're interested in that describes you, but also something maybe that ties back into your field or ties back into the industry that you're a part of. The next section in your LinkedIn profile will be your about section. 
One thing to keep in mind about your about section in your LinkedIn profile is when people see the about section, they have already chosen to click into your profile. So they've seen your headshot, they've seen your name, and they've seen your headline, and they've chosen to click into your profile. So they're already here with a level of interest in looking at what you bring to the table or in connecting with you in some way, shape, or form. The about section is your opportunity to expand on what they have already seen. A couple things to keep in mind here. In the about section, the first three or four lines are all they will see in your profile initially. If you write more than that, and you probably should, the rest of that about section will fall behind a, a more button, right? Or a learn more button. So they'll have to expand that section and click into it to read more. What that gives us the opportunity to do is in those first three or four lines, you really want to, again, almost like your headline, have kind of a hook that makes them want to read more and click that read more button to expand the rest of your about section. In this way, it allows your about section to be a bit longer than you might otherwise have it be on something like a resume if it's in a professional summary or a cover letter if it's you know, stuck on that one page with a cover letter. You're almost combining the ideas of those two things together. So if you've written a great resume and you have a good professional summary, that might play into your about section a little bit. If you have good cover letters that you've written, you might be able to take pieces from your cover letter that maybe pair into your about section in LinkedIn as well. This is your opportunity to choose if someone is to read something about you, and if they stopped and they didn't read anything else on your LinkedIn profile, what do you want them to take away about you professionally that would make them be interested in learning more? Again, focusing on the first few lines of this about section are the part they're gonna read and they'll have to click in to read more if you write more than that, right? So share your story, maybe a relatable experience, maybe there's a lesson learned in there. Uh, I like to also maybe incorporate several different things that you're interested in to provide readers that might have different reasons for being there, the opportunity to connect with you in that way. And so be aware of the fact that your LinkedIn profile can't really be tailored to a particular company. Maybe it can be tailored to a particular industry, but you'll have possible people from all over the place jumping in and reading that LinkedIn profile. So despite how targeted or tailored you might be in your resume, your cover letter, your application materials, and all of those things when you're in a job search to a specific company, as you're making those applications, the LinkedIn profile has to stay just a little bit more generic and you have all kinds of different people that might be viewing it. So create a, a, an about section that might hook many different types of people who might be connecting with you that you might be interested in connecting with, right? You don't need to write an about section that will connect with everybody because you don't really want to connect with everybody on LinkedIn. You want to be making specific professional connections. So make sure your about section speaks to that uh, in that way. Again, this is another great opportunity. Check out other people's profiles. Take inspiration from their about sections to incorporate into your about section in telling your story. But make sure you're telling your story in this about section, focusing in on those first three to four lines to make sure that they're interested in clicking that read more button to hear more about you in that section. Now, the rest of your LinkedIn profile is going to kind of fill in the details from that about section, right? The about section is not meant to be all inclusive because we have the opportunity to talk about experiences here later on in the LinkedIn profile. This is where your LinkedIn profile will very much start to, to look a lot like your resume. So if you've got a really good resume written, this is where you can almost do some copy pasting into your LinkedIn profile to make sure that your digital footprint and your resume have kind of a reflection of each other and have a lot of the similar things in there. As you're putting these in, notice that on a resume, you might be limiting yourself within each experience to that three to six action verb statement kind of way to keep yourself on that one to two page limit. On LinkedIn, you really don't have that page limit going on. You can kind of expand as much as you want. 
each experience, again, is going to have one of those read more buttons where the first two lines maybe will show up for them to read in the initial look at your profile. But within that experience, they'll have to click in to see more. So don't be afraid to put more skills, abilities, and accomplishments in the form of those action verb statements into your LinkedIn profile than you might otherwise have on your resume. The resume, you're, you're being very tailored, you're being very concise, and you're directing it towards a specific skill set that you found in a job description that you're applying for. On LinkedIn, you don't know who's viewing this or what that job description might look like for the person that's trying to find you. And so you want to keep it a little more broad and a little bit more uh, well-defined across all of your different sets of transferable skills, but also your technical skills and hard skills that you've gained at each of your experiences. So don't be afraid to expand a little bit more. Again, they're only going to see the top couple of lines that you put in. Those top couple statements will be the ones that show up for them. The rest of it, they'll have to click in to see it. If they've clicked in to see it, it could kind of be as long as you want it to be. I wouldn't go overboard, but you can definitely go past that generally recommended on a resume three to six statements and expand beyond that. Because on LinkedIn, the more information you have, the more searchable or findable you become uh, when people are sifting through LinkedIn looking for candidates for potential opportunities. Now, there are lots of ways to define experiences. That can be through internships, it can be projects, it can be independent projects outside of school-based work, it can be volunteer experiences where you gained particular skills and abilities that you want to talk about, and there's even a separate section within LinkedIn to talk about those volunteer experiences if you want to have that in a separate section. And then make sure you're also got your work experience in there and that each of your experiences is defined by those key skills and abilities that you gained, right? Craft those action verb statements that show your key skills and abilities and accomplishments from each of those experiences, very similar to what you would have on a resume. If you have any questions about this type of thing, that is what we are here for. Please reach out. All of our contact information for our Career Advising Center will be at the end of this workshop, and you'll be able to, you could schedule appointments with us, and we're happy to chat through whether that's resumes or your LinkedIn profile, what that might look like. You'll want to have an education section in your LinkedIn profile. There's a lot of information that can go into an education section. You can have kind of as much or as little of this as you want within each of your education pieces. Again, I would lean towards the more you have, the more options there are for people to find you based on the skills, background, and education that you bring to the table. Here is an example of what an education section might look like. At National University, your grade level might be a little bit different based on the fact that the credits are, are, are functioning a little bit differently and the month-to-month -month courses create kind of a different look and feel to it. Down at the bottom there, you'll see kind of where uh, our standings kind of fit within kind of the idea of sophomore, junior, senior within the undergraduate space. Make sure you get activities and societies in there. You could also have a chance to put your GPA. And if your GPA is good, I suggest we you put it on there. Uh, my personal opinion is anywhere from a three point and above, you might want to brag about, but you get to choose whether you put that on there or not. Um, I would suggest if you've got a GPA that you want to talk about that you throw it on there because it can be a nice added uh, data point for people who are looking at your profile. Key skills and different things may also be included in this education section. So you see down at the very bottom of this particular sample, strategic writing, interactive storytelling, media management, interactive and mobile campaigns, highlighting some of the key pieces of knowledge that this person has gained from their particular degree. It's not necessarily course names, it's not necessarily classes you took, but the key knowledge bases that you've developed can be beneficial to talk about. Generally, I'm going to get that from the degree title itself, all of those things. But when you can kind of condense it down into those key areas uh, of focus from a knowledge perspective that you're going to bring to the table because of your education, that's a nice way to tell a reader exactly what you bring to the table from a knowledge standpoint as a result of the degrees that you have earned. Don't forget, feel free to blend in all of your degrees that you've worked towards, whether that's associate degrees, bachelor's degrees, uh, graduate degrees on from there. Make sure each of your degrees is listed so they can see the full picture of your educational background. The skills section in a LinkedIn profile is one of the really unique ways that LinkedIn has to share your professional profile with other people. You get to choose which skills you put on this section. It also blends and adds in more keywords to your profile, which is really nice for searchability. 
And the primary function and reason why I really enjoy the skills section is because it allows people to endorse those skills. It's one thing for you to be out there saying that you have teaching skills or communication skills or whatever it might be. It's a completely different feel when you put out there that you have a particular skill and then your connections on LinkedIn can come and endorse you for those skills. People can come that are connected to you and say, yes, I concur. This person has the skill that they say that they have, right? So they can click on the teaching skill that you list or whatever that skill is, and it will show that they have endorsed you for that skill. Now, the best way to get these endorsements is to go out and endorse other people's skills. LinkedIn does this really nice thing where if you go and endorse somebody, it will ping them via email and say, hey, so-and-so has endorsed you you should go check out their profile and endorse them as well. So one of the best ways to start to generate endorsements on the skills for your LinkedIn page is to go to your connections that you know well and that you can attest to their skills, go endorse their skills, and LinkedIn will kind of help you out by pinging them to remind them that they might also want to reciprocate and endorse some of your skills as well. It is also perfectly fine to reach out to connections that you've made over the course of your time, maybe some of your better connections, people you've worked with before, previous colleagues, faculty, supervisors, different things of that nature. Ask them to go and endorse some of your skills to start to build that pool of endorsements on the skills that you've chosen, right? My suggestion is build that skills list first. Don't go too crazy, make it manageable, make it the things that are kind of top skills that you have in your industry, and then Start to ask people to get those endorsements in, go endorse other people, and you'll build up a nice repertoire of skills that not only have you said that you have, but other people have collaborated with you to say, yes, you actually do have those skills. That becomes a very powerful way of showing the top skills that you do have that other people can endorse you for. It also encourages people to interact with your profile. As they start to do that, your, your network will grow as different people do interact with your profile and then go back to their own. And they're, they're, they will be able to share that profile and share you with other people as well through that interaction. And it gets them on your profile to see what you have as well, which is also a good way to generate views and all of those things of your profile. How do you grow your network on LinkedIn? There are some, especially if you're starting from scratch, obvious ways to build out your network. And it starts with just connecting with the people that are in kind of your non-digital or non-LinkedIn based network. Those people that you would consider your network to start with. Colleagues, previous managers and supervisors, if, if you have good relationships with them. Uh, this could be faculty members, staff members at universities that you've attended. Um, this could also be alumni. And one of the better ways to grow your network is to connect with your school's page, connect with the NU LinkedIn profile page and the Alumni Association as well on LinkedIn. That will get you access to being able to state um, that you're an alumni and it will show in your profile when you put National University in that you are an alumni. Uh, or a current student. And so you'll be able to start to make those connections with different alumni um, or with people that are interacting with the school's page as well. This also gives you, again, potential access to a lot of different people's profiles to be able to connect with them based on the fact that you're connected with them through LinkedIn. And LinkedIn will do a great job of suggesting people that it thinks you know. When you first start out on LinkedIn, those suggestions might not be super correct. You may not know any of those people. But the more people you connect with on LinkedIn, the more LinkedIn will suggest people that you may actually have something in common with that are part of your network based on places that you've worked, schools that you've attended, and interest groups that you follow. So the more of those things you do, the better the recommendations will be from LinkedIn on who to follow. I often will skim through my, recommend my recommended uh, connections list on LinkedIn just to see if there's anyone who I haven't thought of connecting with on LinkedIn that LinkedIn has shown, hey, you have a bunch of connections with these people. You might know them and want to connect with them. Oftentimes, every time I do that, I find someone that I was like, oh, I didn't know I was con wasn't connected with them on LinkedIn. I did meet them the other day or I was working with them on a project at some point. And then all of a sudden I can connect with them and grow my network within the system. Also, again, allows for people to endorse you and interact with your profile, the more of these groups that you're associated with. So you can join a lot of different uh, pages and groups. You can join companies that you're interested in and follow them within the system. You can also join uh, interest groups that might have similar uh, professional interests to you within the system. And those are great places to find 
places to comment, places to post, and keep your profile active and engaged as well as finding people to expand and grow your network. But don't forget, especially as you're starting out on, on LinkedIn, reach out to the people that you actually know. And that may even mean jumping outside of LinkedIn and having a conversation with someone who you know is in your network and saying, hey, I'm getting my LinkedIn profile up and running. Uh, would you mind if I send you a connection request? Um, and then they can say, oh yeah, absolutely. And then they might even be willing to make recommendations to you for connecting with some other people, right? So you start to grow your network from your physical network out into your digital network on LinkedIn and you start to make some of those connections as well. As you're making these connections and sending out invitations to people, if you really want to make that connection, customize your connection message. You'll have the opportunity when you request to connect with somebody to send a quick message. And so if it's someone maybe you haven't had a conversation with in a while or that you want to remind them kind of what your connection was and why you're sending them a connection invite on LinkedIn, you can write a little message um, to them as part of that. This is a particularly effective if you're looking to connect with people within an industry or within a field that you maybe don't actually know, but you'd like to be connected with on LinkedIn. Give them a quick blurb about why you're sending a connection invite to them. They're much more likely to accept a connection invite when you personalize and customize that and tell them the why of the connection before, uh, it, it, as if, if you leave it as the generic LinkedIn message just doesn't have that impact that you might want to have as well. So those are some things to think about as you're growing your network and building out those connections within LinkedIn. Posting content on LinkedIn is a great way to keep your activity up and to keep your profile in people's minds as you are kind of utilizing LinkedIn and going about a job search process or a network expansion or whatever you're trying to do. Posting content on LinkedIn does not have to be a full-time job necessarily. You can spend little bits of time to do this to keep your profile active. Some people prefer posting original content and will come up with their own things that they want to comment on, whether that's current events in your industry and they want you want to post something original and unique to your profile that people would then see based on connections that you have. Um, but one of the best ways to really easily keep your profile active when you're posting on LinkedIn when you have built up your connections and you see those connections posting their own content or posting on other content, maybe within those key groups that you've joined or companies or some of your network connections, you can actually just respond to posts in those conversations as well. That also, again, keeps your LinkedIn profile active. It shows that you're engaged in the communities on LinkedIn and will continue to grow your network because you'll be out there more. So sometimes it's not about creating maybe an original post or original content, although that is a good way to continue to be active on LinkedIn. Sometimes it's about getting on those sites and getting on those pages where people are having discussions within your field and contributing to those discussions. What were your thoughts on that thing that happened? What were your thoughts on this post that happened, right? Keep your posts professional. Um, make sure that you are using appropriate um, language and sentences for a professional post on LinkedIn. Remember not to treat LinkedIn like any other social media site. It has a different feel and has a different purpose than other social media sites. So keep those posts professional um, and, and be involved in those conversations that are happening within your field on LinkedIn. That will go a long ways to increasing your visibility and to expanding your network within LinkedIn. A couple of action plans for you after going through this workshop. Finish your LinkedIn profile up. Get all the pieces in there, particularly focusing on those sections that we talked about today. Uh, again, the big ones being that profile picture, that headline, and your name being in there correctly, and then expanding out from there on your about section, on your experiences, on your education, um, on maybe groups that you want to join, and different things like that get that profile up to a kind of a robust level where you're very searchable and that it's also a great reflection of your resume in the digital space. Start to grow that network. Look for connections you can make, whether that's the recommendations from LinkedIn or whether you're kind of home growing those connections and outreaching to people, maybe from your existing network or from people that you want to start to network with. And then start to post some content on LinkedIn. See where it takes you. See who finds you as a result of the comments you start to make or the discussions you get involved in on LinkedIn. That will be a great way to start to expand your network. So those are three things you can do right now after this to hopefully start to further your content and your profile on LinkedIn. If you have any questions as a result of this workshop or you want to go through uh, specifically your LinkedIn profile with a career advisor or your resume so that you can then translate your resume over onto LinkedIn, we are here to help with that. The National University Career Center 
um, is available. We use Handshake for all of our appointment scheduling. So you can sign into Handshake, jump to our career center and choose an appointment at a day and time that works best for you to connect with one of our career advisors. If you have any additional questions for us, our contact information and website are listed below, and you can jump on there to get a lot of great content and information from a career development standpoint, or you can email us or call us to ask any specific questions if you have any trouble getting into Handshake or if you want to contact us for any other reason. Thank you so much for attending the workshop today. We appreciate it.